Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So today's video, we are going to take a close look at some retro tech. So when it comes to retro tech, we have so many different kinds of ways you can approach this. From Chinese like products, but also other, let's say, very interesting piece of hardware. And in this video, we are going to do a little bit of a GPU love. Yeah, this is one of my personal addictions. And I'm just going to be honest, like the first, the first step is admitting I have a problem. And I absolutely have a problem with GPU collecting. It's so much fun to check out other, let's say, different products, particularly when it comes to the PC gaming. I've been a builder for, I think, over 15 years now. And when it comes to, let's say, buying used graphic cards, it is also an, a lot of problems because it's always a huge risk. Oh man. This connection doesn't really look great, but still we're going to be testing it out and also going to be cleaning it up because the connection can be cleaned up with some maybe some pure alcohol to see if there's any damage going on. It can be due of all of this, let's say filth is be stacking up in combination with the heat. Again, oh man, there was a lot of stuff coming out of this thing and yeah, can we clean it up that we're going to figure out. Let's plug it in and let's see if this could even be booting it up. I'm getting my old PC over here and I've noticed like when it comes to the old GPUs, a single one, you can just plug it in all kinds of PCs, but take consideration, depending on the Windows version, combination with SLI, etc, it can be a hassle. But so far, so good, it seems to be booting up with no artifacts or other problems. Alright guys, so it's going to be an unboxing together with you. But let's do this unboxing because also I got a free gift from the seller. So I'm curious, what did he send me because this is something I didn't order. So it was cool to have somebody sending you some extra stuff to review on the channel. He told me that it's actually a graphics card, so I am really curious what kind of a graphics card. Is it going to be an NVIDIA or is it going to be an AMD? It's cool to add one to my collection. And oh yeah, he duct taped the bottom part. But let's open it up. You can already see over here at the side the other G8800 GTS is in here. Oh man, that was a question like how do people pack it up? Because these graphic cards, it's always, let's say, a problem with some, let's say, packaging. He wrapped some paper around it. Let's check out of the overall quality of the graphics card. Because it's always a gamble with these things. And yeah, they are quite old. And it is possible that they can break with, let's say, sending it or in the general transit. So let's take a close look at the overview of everything. And so first impression that this thing looks in very pristine condition. And particularly when you're looking at, let's say, the pins over here. The other one was completely decolored and that was something that wasn't great. So I was really worried, but the other one did work right. So let's get myself the PC, let's slap this card in and also check out if you can combine it with SLI. But before we're going to do that, let's see what the extra gift, because it looks like a small card. It's like Christmas with these very nice napkins. Let's see, what do we get with the second card? And whoa, this is a dusty one. So this is not a one, two, three situation. I can see what it is. Let's look on the back over here. Serial number, it doesn't, doesn't ring a bell whatsoever. It's a PC Express card. We should plug it in. There is no extra power needed. So this is going to be a low powered, let's say, graphics card. But I have no idea if it's going to be an AMD or an Nvidia card. But yeah, we need to clean it up. And what's kind of weird in the same situation, maybe when I'm going to be looking into the serial number, I can find some information. But that's going to be something for a different story. But okay, so let's plug it into the PC itself. Let's plug it in the first port. Let's click it in. The next thing that we're going to do is plug in the power supply. We're only going to need the six pin or the eight pin. Yep, it's only the six pin. That's it. Of course, put in the screw for holding it in place. Otherwise, we're going to have a wobbly. GPU, then that is something we don't want to. And let's plug in the cable and let's power it on. And let's see if there is anything going on with this thing. It's always an exciting moment to check out if it's going to be booting up. So let's power it on and let's see if this thing is going to be posting. And did I buy a broken card? No, seems to be booting. Okay, that's absolutely great. So far, so good. The cooling fan seems to be working fine. So let's check out if it's going to be booting up in Windows and let's check out the temperatures. If this is going to be a problem or do we need to remove the thermal paste and everything else. Temperatures are not bad at all for around like a max of 40 Celsius. Take consideration these old graphics cards can become really hot, especially like the extreme models. But in the end, plug the blade and for this age it's absolutely bad. We have some, let's say overall upgrades for this, but we're not going to implement it. We're just going to be using it and seeing how hot it gets. 
So I bought two of them and I just want to do an SLI. I especially bought this Maximum 7 Ranger board because it was compatible with older GPUs. That's the first thing I've noticed. Newer generation don't have SLI support. So it's absolutely a rabbit hole finding the right windows, the right driver, but also the right video cards. So that's just absolutely one of those crazy things that you're getting with these likes of older cards. The test PC comes with an OC Z700 watt and enough, let's say, power outputs. Yeah, the convenient thing with this particular 8800 GTS is that we're only having one single 6 pin for every graphics card. So it's not going to be an issue whatsoever. So let's plug in the SLI bridge to have the full connection going on. The next thing that we need to do is going into the software. And that was the difficult part. I managed to get it working on the Windows 7. Yeah, we're going all retro mode in this. But later on I also made like a retro build, so that's not going to be a problem whatsoever. But so far, everything's booting up and everything seems to be working. Alright, so let's enable the SLI. And that was the biggest problem. The newer generation boards didn't have the functionality. But you can just see over here everything seems to be working, all of the graphic cards. And here we can enable the SLI functionality. And everything is going to be configured. We don't have a signal for a couple of seconds and then we'll reboot into the SLI. It will take some time. And there we go. SLI has been enabled. With the hardware monitor here we can just actually see that both of the GPUs are enabled and working just fine. The idle temperature will be the same but take consideration the output will go through one GPU so one will get way hotter than the second one. But does it run crisis? Yeah with two cards it seems to be working just fine. So the configuration of, let's say, the details is going to be around medium, slightly high, but the GTS was completely underpowered, a single but also a dual card. You can also just get yourself a GTX or an Ultra, but this is just more of a fun novelty to do. Realist Rage 4 seems to be working just fine. Okay, so a lot of indie games and older games, the 8800 GTS is still a beautiful car to play with. But when you're looking at the details in the left top corner, you can see that this thing doesn't utilize the SLE functionality and the second card doesn't do anything at all. The Street Fighter 4, one of my favorite fighting games of the Street Fighter series, seems to be utilizing the SLI just fine. For example, when you're looking at the first card and the second one, you can see that there has been a great balance. The first card is grabbing around 55, 58% and the second card has like a 50 up to 55% of all of the GPU rendering. And this is one of those very cool novelties that makes me kind of exciting to see how great it worked. So with two cards, we just have like the perfect balance. Everything has been set to full HD and ultra settings. So let's do another round of the Street Fighter 4 with the SLI disabled. And here you can just see that all of the power is going to be drawn from one single card. So what is kind of interesting is that with the same settings you can see that the card is hitting around 75, 78, now 80% of being used. Where when they're heading the dual SLI we're having 50% on both. So it's kind of interesting to see how it actually works. So the single card can still play this game, but the SLA was just a fun novelty and you can just use it with games like this. But if you have an old gaming PC or you're building with an SLA functionality, take consideration that not all of the games will run super great. So for example, this game only utilized the SLA for 2% of the second card. So this is like one of those compatibility issues that we're going to be needing. That, yeah, you actually don't really need that SLA function with this game because it only utilized 15% of the first card. So it's kind of laughable, but it's kind of cool to see how much stuff you can actually still play on an 88 GTS and an old, let's say, CPU, GPU combination. So SLI, man, it's absolutely cool to build myself an old PC that still utilizes it. Yeah, is it absolutely pointless in some different ways? Yeah, I think it's going to be more like a fun thing to do if you want to have an old PC like I'm having over here. I just want to slap two cars in it and just to see how far we can push it. 
check out the other channel, The Wicked GPU Gamer, where I'm going to be in depth with this. Yeah, when it comes to these GPU things, it's quite difficult and a big risk. Simply because some of the cards can be faulty, having problems with the fans. And if you're finding two of them, they're not similar. Yeah, especially with the first generation SLI cards, we will have issues and compatibility issues and other problems. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell. And absolutely, this isn't a big rabbit hole, especially when you're looking at the drivers. It was absolutely a nightmare, but a lot of fun making these videos for you.